It is now Friday the 18th of July. I kind of uh, cleared out this area today and put a lot of mulch on this part. I didn't really spread it around much because I don't have any hopes that it's going to stay where I put it because the rain will just wash it down anyway. So it's more there just to draw the slugs to it rather than to the plants that are already growing. I threw some mulch or some of the waste out into the bushes here too so the slugs will go the other direction as well. So over here I've been kind of building a I don't know what <clears throat> in the shape of a minnow trap and that kind of took me most of the afternoon because I was bored of looking for slugs. This uh, corn here is topping out. I don't see any any cobs yet though, so we must have some time. The rest of the corn is really shooting up fast here. And uh, got a lot of little sunflowers growing, but as predicted, the slugs probably ate most of them. I found a lot of little stubs and little stumps left of, of pumpkins, a lot of mostly eaten, mostly eaten sunflowers and uh, some sections where they're growing pretty well. I'll go film them in a second. Put in a couple more stakes here. I haven't run the string yet. I figure these beans will go up and maybe make it as far as halfway to this tree. I put in one, two, three, four more stakes. Not very deep, just enough to put some string on them. So, over to where the slugs are doing most of the damage. Here. Mostly eaten pumpkins. A lot of sunflowers growing up there. I covered some of them. There are pumpkins underneath that, that uh, hood in the middle. Sunflowers in the bottom one. There are sunflowers in the top left and the top right as well. But there are sunflowers growing. Also underneath this one I cut another bottle. There's a good pumpkin growing there. You can see pumpkins that got eaten to the left of that. Good pumpkins growing up there underneath that coffee, coffee jar I found. So my pumpkin experiment over here kind of deflated. It's still in there, but I don't think it's doing very well. I haven't been here for a week since the last time and the time before that I didn't film anything and the time before that I didn't film anything and so last time there was film was uh, two weekends ago so predation seems to be the major cause of problems here I'll just go directly to it I walked a long way but I'll go directly to the problem and I'm not sure if these are pigs or deer doing this but uh, I think pigs because they've tried to redig up this potato plant again, even though they already did this one. I dug that one up myself, and they've tried to redig it up, thinking there were going to be potatoes there, but they couldn't find anything. Right here, they took this one out. I think this is the second time, and maybe there were some small potatoes that they refound. I don't know. They killed my best corn. This corn was uh, pollinating there. I'm going to try to pick that up and save some of the pollen to mix it with this other corn because I'm going to try to make a local corn if I can get anything to grow. So there is some corn left standing. You can see corn everywhere standing actually. So maybe they won't do it on the top of the pile if I clear out the bottom stuff that's broken and destroyed. But I need to try to save that pollen maybe try to prop that one up here and get the dirt off the top side so it's not so top laden. But you can see they did a number here. There's a potato plant just dying away. They took some potatoes off the top but they didn't dig down deep. So I'm harvesting potatoes today. I'm going to harvest every potato I have. Because if they can smell potatoes they'll uh, just dig up the rest of the garden. So I need to get them away from those potatoes. However, Look at this nice, huge, beautiful thicket of mostly, 
mostly corn, and hidden in there beautifully is the tomato plant and some flax, of course. But this is just like a, a jungle. It's, it's above my head. I'm very excited about this. Here's horseradish. Those slugs try so hard. They try so hard, but the horseradish is too resilient. So good job, horseradish. Got one sunflower growing there. The, the pig broke this by stepping on it. See that? That's not from me stepping on it. The pig did that. Or a deer. <clears throat> Someplace back there is my uh, Jerusalem artichoke that was doing so well. Yeah, this one here. That's it. Probably a bit blurry, but the one that's is the one that's to the left of the wooden stick that's kind of supporting that ivy, I guess, morning glory. I have to get off there. Anyway, that's about uh, three and a half feet tall. The slugs seem to stop messing with it once they grow the hairs. So here's a hoof print of the scoundrel. And I would say it's a big bore because that's uh, three fingers wide and about uh, my hand size. And I could not do that with my hands. That's a bore. There's, there's no deer here big enough to do that. There's no red deer here. They only have tiny little roe deer. They're like the size of a golden retriever full grown. Maybe a bit bigger, but <clears throat> that's a, it's a heavy hoof print. So I'm thinking wild boar, big wild boar. Because what they do is they go along here, snip off the corn, and root it up and they, they think something's under there. Maybe they find the actual corn itself that's still attached to the root. They don't seem interested in the stalk, but they seem interested in that little tiny kernel of corn still in the root. So, they've left the high stuff, maybe for later, a snack for later, who knows? Or maybe they discovered they couldn't really get much off it, so they gave up, but they came this far, then probably ran off into the woods that way. Because after that, they did root around here, they rooted around back there just a tiny bit, but this is all my planting stuff, they didn't do this. So, I think that they gave up about right here, took off. And probably did this in 10 or 20 minutes one morning the week. I don't think they've been doing this every night. But if they have, I'll be here until dark, so I'll be scaring them off if they try to come out. And I'm going to be marking the territory the way a man does. That's right. That's what men do. And dogs. So finally, I have a mix of grass. You can see the picture. And I have... Uh, more lupin, a different type of lupine than I planted last time. The slugs ate those up by the thousands. They just loved them. So I'm going to plant more for them. path to the wild plum harvest. These plums that have fallen here are still very green. They're not ready to eat. This tree doesn't have ripe plums. This tree ahead of me has ripe plums. They're very delicious. And they're hanging amply in the boughs and dropping in the weeds. So my plan here is to do a bit of shaking. 
I have a bed sheet and I have a material bag from Carrefour and I'm going to shake plums hopefully into this gap and funnel them down into the bottom. So I'll try to film that somehow. No idea how yet. Here it goes. Okay, so I'll lay the blanket in there and I'll shake one of those uh, trunks. You can't really see the trunks at this angle, but I'll shake the trunk on the left side and see what falls in here. I just shook the tree again and I took all that fell in there from the tree. <laughs> I laid an entire branch barren, but there's still a lot of uh, growing ones up there. I ate a few of them. Even though they're hanging on the vine and they're still a little bit green, these ones are already sweet, so... Like this one, I could take this one right now. Hmm. That one was still a bit tart. But for example, this branch... I know these ones just fell here because I cleared it off earlier. This branch is different. Overall, much sweeter. But nothing compared to this. This one fell off the tree naturally. It's it's soft. It splits open when you squeeze too hard. <laughs> there goes the pit. This is the pulp without the pit. Delicious. These plums are so delicious, it's amazing. Just because I have absolutely nothing else going on, I am separating the bad plums and the leaves and putting the good plums into this blue material bag. And I'm throwing bad plums off in every direction, as far out as I can, so hopefully they'll smell and the slugs will go towards those bad plums. I don't think there's any way that by throwing the bad plums out there that I'm going to draw more slugs into the area since the whole area is infested with slugs. So that's about two kilos of wild yellow plums. Some unripe and some perfect. So I'll separate them and do different things with the ripeness. The ripe ones I'll eat or jar. And the super sour ones, I'm going to keep and maybe make some sort of liquor or something with them because they could be interesting in that or even a, a really, really sour pie. So I'm thinking about putting them in an apple pie as well because they'd be really sour. It'd be pretty interesting. So we'll see how that goes.